Welcome to Rick Rack Ruby. I'm Laura Cluvo. Today we will be making two angel ornaments from one vintage handkerchief. They're fun and easy, so let's get started. To make two angels from one handkerchief, we'll start with the handkerchief. This handkerchief is about 11 and a half inches square, which is a good size for this project, but keep in mind that we're going to be working with less than half of the height of the um, of the handkerchief. We're going to make it like this, and so you're going to be probably this one will wind up being about five inches tall. So just bear that in mind when you're choosing the size of your head bead. For this size, I'm going to use a 20 millimeter head bead. I have already made the face on the bead and you can find the instructions for the face in my Focus on Faces video. So I'm going to pull two lengths, <laughs> two lengths of six inch tool, one, two, this is a little long, this looks like about a half a yard. That's okay, and then fold this in half and tie it in the center with 1 16th inch satin ribbon. This is sort of an off-white color. You can use whatever color you like. I'm gonna tie this off with a square knot in the center. And then send the ends through the bead from the bottom to the top. I want the tool to fill the hole in the bead. So not like that and not like that, <laughs> but just kind of right where the tool starts to come to the very top of the head bead. And I'll add a smudge of glue on the back here. Just a little smudge of hot glue. Slide that bead on over the glue, but not, not so that the tool comes out the top of the head. And then tie the ends into an overhand knot for the hanging loop. I'm trying to get this centered in the frame and I think it might be too big. Anyway, um, let's see. I'm going to center it this way and it doesn't have to be perfect. And draw a line with disappearing marker across the center. So this is the center right here, which already has a, <laughs> a little rust mark. I wonder if there was a pin there or something. And then draw a line. Don't cut on that line. I know that <laughs> it's natural to think that's what I'm going to ask you to do, but I'm just going to um, make a second line one inch on either side of the center. So I have this two inch wide strip right in the middle here. And then I'm going to cut that strip. This particular handkerchief is a good choice for this technique because it has four corners that are identical and just sort of a a simple sort of low-key design and then there's lace around the edge this is the best kind of handkerchief to find for this if you have just one large motif that's not the best idea and it's always great to have lace around the edge when you're making an angel so the idea is that I'm going to cut this in half so here we go the the center strip that we removed from the handkerchief is going to become the two centers for these two angel dresses. So first I will overlap this about half an inch. We're going to leave about an inch in the center. I'm going to stitch this with my machine or you can stitch by hand and be sure you have the right side up. And then, you know, sometimes they're so well made that the back is almost as nice as the front. But be sure that you're looking at the right side and get the hem sort of aligned. Remember, this is disappearing marker, so that line will go away. 
And I'm gonna sew this by machine with white thread, just right along the hem there and then around the bottom edge all the way to where that overlaps there. I'm not gonna sew this raw edge. And I'll be back. Here we go, the first side is sewn. And now I'm gonna wrap the second side around. And this is a little bit trickier to fit, um, to sew because this part kind of gets caught up, but it's not that bad. So we're gonna sew the second side. And I sew directly over the hem there, just right on that little rolled hem. That gives me, that gives my, my, my machine something to hold on to. I started to sew and then I realized that when you're sewing something like this, it's actually easier to sew from the inside. So um, I put it like this on the bed of my machine and I sewed from the top like this. And that was easier than sewing it like this. Now I'm gonna trim this away. So this is extra. And sometimes I even trim away this here in the back um, because you can kind of see the seam allowance through the handkerchief. I just want to get sort of an even, about a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So I'll trim away anything beyond that. So here's the dress. And this line will go away. Um, here's the two sides folded in and here's the center. The back looks like this. Um, I'm gonna gather up the top edge now, just the raw edge, no folding, no hemming, nothing. And I will gather it around the neck of the angel. So here we go. I'll start about in the center back about a quarter of an inch down and just gather up the edge with a running stitch. There we go. And now I'm going to place this over her head like this, center her face above the center panel. Pull the gathers tight. That looks good. I'm gonna wrap it tightly and then sew through a couple of times through those gathers. I'm securing the top edge of the handkerchief to the tool. I want to be sure the neck edge stays up close to the head and now I'm going to secure this in the back. It's looking cute already, right? I'm going to trim off this excess tool. It's okay if a little bit shows. It's like a petticoat. There we go. Now I'm going to add a lace collar. It's about three quarters of an inch wide, but it doesn't matter. You can use any color, any type, whatever you like, about half an inch to one inch usually will work. And um, I'm just gonna gather up the top edge and um, put that around her neck. Here we go, I will fold the end under and I'm securing the knot in the top edge of the header where it's got something to really grip. And then I'm just gonna do a running stitch in and out, right up close to the header, but not through the header. Now I'll place the collar around her neck Join the two ends in the back. I am distributing the fullness of the gathers like this, that looks good. And then I'll stitch through from the back to the front. 
That looks good. And then I'll secure this in the back. Great. Now for the hair. I've been using Auburn yarn for hair lately. Hmm. What do you think? I'm using two different kinds of yarn. These are both mohair. This is loopy mohair, and this is sort of like a fuzzy mohair. I'm gonna wrap these, hold, hold the ends like this, and wrap this one and two and three. Just three times because that's six strands, that's plenty. Um, leave yourself a generous tail here, and then wrap this around all the way, pick up the first end, and tie it off in the center. I know if you're seeing this for the first time, it might look tricky, and I do have a video called Ruby's Hair Technique, or I think I go a little bit more slowly. So I tied a square knot, and I'm gonna trim that, but don't trim those too short. You don't want it to come undone. And then I call that a bundle, a figure eight bundle. And now I'll do a second one. I'll try to go slow this time. Leave yourself a long tail, about six inches, and then wrap one, <laughs> get that out of the way, one and two and three and. So there's three loops on each finger. It's a figure eight shape and cut a long tail and then take this piece and go all the way around, all the way, complete revolution. And then, or is that a rotation? No, a revolution. Then pick up the first tail and pull it through and tie a square knot in the center of the figure eight. You can see here why it's important to have a nice long tail. Um, actually, both ends should be long, just so you have room to maneuver and tie. And there's my second bundle, six loops of yarn on each side. They're approximately the same. You know, your hands might be smaller or bigger than mine, and so your figure eight might wind up being wider or narrower or whatever, but I've never seen one that didn't work. Now I'm going to spread some hot glue on the back of the head right here in, in a circle like a penny on the back. Like that, and then I'll press the center of the first bundle onto the top of the bead just behind the ribbon, like that. And then if these little ends they kind of look like bangs, so I always leave them. Okay, this isn't quite secured, so I'm gonna add a little more glue here to secure these loose loops. That's better. Now for the second bundle, I'm just gonna squeeze out a drop of glue right here to the front of the hanging loop and then press that knot, that center knot, into that drop of glue right there. I'm gonna hold that for a second. And then twist each side of the bundle toward the back. And then press that to the side of the head. This one twist toward the back. And glue that to the side of the head. So I'm gonna draw a line of glue right here along the side. That looks good. That looks good. Now, this little bit that's sticking up actually doesn't look right, so I'm gonna glue that down and maybe just add a little glue right here for this bit right here to secure that to the head. And I think that'll be good. There we go, now we'll add the halo. 
This is 20 gauge gold wire, it's just from the craft store. I only need about, let's see, let's do um, two inches. I like to use a thimble to wrap the wire to get the nice round shape like this. It's like a U shape, so I'll add a drop of glue to each end. And then press the ends into the side of her hair, like that. I like the halo to be sort of incorporated into the hair and not like way up above the head, but you can do it way up above the head if you like to. All right, now let's do a little decoration on the front of her collar. I had a couple of options. So for her bow, I could use, this is like friendship bracelet thread. That would be pretty. Embroidery floss. This is kind of like the right tone for the matching the tatting. I could use the same ribbon that I used for her hanger. That would be good. But I think I'm going to do uh, metallic gold and white baker's twine. I have it on a needle and I'm just going to stitch through the center there, right there. But you can use anything. You could use, um, you know, silk ribbon is good because it can get into really tight spots. Let's see, I'm going to make it about this long, I think. I always err on the side of length. I always make it longer than it has to be because I can always trim it. That looks about right. And I love the gold. It um, picks up the gold in the halo. I'm just tying an overhand knot into each streamer. And that's important because Baker's twine will unravel. And then I'm gonna trim the streamer below the knots. There we go. And then I had this, I only have one of these. It's a mother of pearl button. I thought that might be pretty. And I also think I have some flowers. I was digging around looking for flowers, which I found these, I think were from Timu. And anyway, when I was looking for these, I realized that I have some purple tulle. So I think my second handkerchief angel, I'll make with purple tulle. All right, so, hmm, I think I'll do, really there's only one purple color and it's this dark sort of violet color. Let's see. Yep, I think that's what I'll do. So I'll use my wire cutters to cut the stem there and a little bit of hot glue and I'll press that right into the middle of the bow. There we go, that looks good. So let me start the second one and get caught up and I'll be back. I got the second handkerchief angel on her way. Um, I decided to make the hair red on both of these because I wanna have white wings and I like the contrast um, with the auburn hair. I used the uh, mother of pearl, the purple button. I really like that. Um, besides that, it's pretty much the same. So let's make the wings. To make the wings, we start with a circle of medium weight iron-on interfacing. And this is a four and three quarter inch circle. I'm gonna fuse this to, to the back of my sort of neutral print wing fabric, which of course I've already done. Looks like this. And then I'll fold it in half on the grain, pin it and stitch around the edge, the curved edge, 
with a scant quarter inch seam allowance. I'm going to go all the way around the curved edge, not leaving any opening. Here we go. I sewed around the curved edge and now with my pinking shears, I'm going to trim that seam allowance. And now I'm going to cut an opening in the front, well, in the front layer of the wings. So I'll fold it in half to determine the center and draw a little plus sign or you can do whatever shape you like, but this works for me. And, you know, I'm kind of pinching only one layer and this will be the front of the wing. I'm clipping all four of the, um, the arms of the plus sign and I will turn this right side out. I turned this to the right side and I pressed it nice and flat. And remember this opening is the front. So after I embroider around the edge, this is going to be glued to the back of her head. So I put some purple thread in my machine. I made the first one I made, here it is. The first one I made, the purple was too light. There's just not enough contrast here, it barely shows. So this one, I'm going to use a little bit stronger shade of purple. There we go, that looks good. So now I just have to glue the wings to the back of the heads. I will squeeze out a circle of glue right there and press that onto the back of her head. I try to get it centered. That looks good. There's one, two. And we're done. Two angel Christmas ornaments made from one handkerchief. Thank you for watching my video. If you're enjoying my tutorials, please like, share, and subscribe.